Mesdames, Messieurs. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to welcome all the attendees attending this meeting who have been invited for that purpose. Africa is, of course, submitted to major conflicts on this planet. There are several conflicts, but we can say that one third of the conflicts, ongoing conflicts today, are located in Africa. They represent one eighth of the population and a lot more regarding resources. Depending on the period, one of these conflicts, of course, is very much important at the international level, especially Sahel and Libya, a neighboring country, since there is a connection at the international level between what's happening, it means that we need, of course, to take action as Europeans are concerned. And, of course, we are deeply concerned about the assessment of the conflicts. And consequently, we need, of course, to refer to the uh, um, institutions, entities, the United Nations and the agencies. There are other areas that are, of course, submitted to these uh, conflicts. And sometimes one of these conflicts ends up with a solution and good uh, stability, which is a, a good point. And this is a positive uh, ascertainment. And I would say that today, this is what you can see, for example, regarding Ethiopia in Africa. And at the same time, uh, good relationships between Ethiopia and Eritrea, for example. But having said that, there are other uh, long-lasting conflicts at the present time. And of course, their um, importance is uh, very much uh, a, a big concern. And the, the area, especially regarding the Great Lakes, uh, I would say that it is devoid of attention at the international la level. Well, if we compare with it between last year and uh, uh, 20, 2019, I would say that maybe some conflicts have dwindled. But having said that, especially regarding the uh, DCR, lands on lots of I would say that the death toll is extremely high, especially against uh, the population, unarmed populations, and various impairments against women and children, namely. There are lots and lots of confrontations between militia and armed groups, and especially regarding tribes and the ethnicity. The, the resources are used by the uh, manufacturers, uh, especially in the east of uh, DCR. And uh, this is a uh, part of the embezzlement provided by those uh, uh, militias and groups. This is a great crisis, a big crisis. And at the end of the day, DCR is unable to protect its own territory and to protect the population. This is a major concern. And at the end of it, at the end of it, the institutions regarding uh, the DCR are no more reliable. They are sub subjugated, and especially, especially uh, depending upon the various rulers, the uh, 2018 Nobel Prize laureate, Dr. Denis Mukwege. I would say that he uh, he is uh, based at the ho his hospital based in. Uh, Bukavu, and he has been able to repair women who have uh, suffered from uh, uh, impairments, etc. Uh, um, during his speech, for example, in 2018, he attended, he gave an opening address regarding those major issues. So I would like to introduce this fact to put an emphasis upon the situation in the DCR, which is, of course, of big, big a big issue because of atrocities, etc. But the problem is that there is a transboundary overspilling of the of the conflicts in Rwanda, Uganda, etc. And they are deeply affected by the crisis at, from the humanitarian profile. Since neighboring countries are, of course, affected by that, I think that this is something that should not be neglected, especially the role played by the African Union is not sufficiently robust, I would say, regardless of their will 
to uh, uh, act, to do something, to build up something very important, especially regarding peace enforcement. The United Nations forces, long-standing uh, forces, have had a mandate that was renewed, renewed, but the problem is that they are supposed to withdraw from the regions. Uh, I think that our dip French diplomats will clarify the situation, especially regarding the Security Council at the United Nations. and. On top of that, the, uh, P the international jurisdictions have been able to accomplish, to take action, good action, because of the context, especially regarding that region. And I would say that these are of paramount importance from the penal profile, and we hope that, that they will go on with their efforts. And then I will hand over to my colleague, my friend, Gérard Longuet. We, from the uh, members of parliament, as French members of the parliament at the European level as well, I think that this is absolutely indispensable for us to look for alternatives to uh, discuss about the action that should be undertaken in this respect, or maybe with new orientations in order to restore peace and the, the, the human rights for citizens. And we had, of course, uh, uh, discussions among French members. In addition to foreign members, we believe we keep the, a good remembrance of what happened, the, uh, the, 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 the rampage that happened in 1994 with the consequences from the political, ethical profile. And of course, we, uh, the uh, French forces were supposed to play a good role. They did their duty, especially in re regarding this uh, uh, rampage, if you will. So I would like to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, in this conference room. I would like to uh, thank the organizers, the uh, speakers, because they will be able to clarify the situation today during this session. And then I'm going to hand over to my colleague and friend, my successor, by the way, and then uh, to the first round session. Thank you for your attention. As Senator from Meuse region, I would like to welcome you here, ladies and gentlemen, to org to, for this uh, debate, this discussion. We have uh, a sponsor, Alain Richard, and myself. We are your sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, in order to make it possible for you to be able to sit here in this conference room in order to exchange your views about this specific issue, which is, of course, a big issue. And why did I decide to organize a session here at the Senate? Of course, I am not an expert in the field of uh, the Great Lakes. I am just a French uh, political uh, expert. And my colleagues, of course, I am in charge of the, um, I am the the chairman of a specific association, but which has nothing to do with the Great Lakes. The reason why I can say that I'm not an expert in the field of Great Lakes. Two senators, Mathieu Darnaud and Christophe Anstré Frassa, are the experts in this field. The former minister of, uh, I was the former minister of uh, uh, defense um, with uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, who was. Um, who was delighted to welcome you. But as I said, it's not because I'm an expert in this area. It's not because uh, uh, as a senator, I would like, I was supposed to, be, to invite you. That was for personal reasons, because I was the Minister of Defense of the Armed Forces. So I have good relationships on a continuous basis reliable uh, relationships with our officers, our um, uh, chief of staff, uh, chiefs of staff, who are systematically in agreement, and they are involved in, in the um, uh, OPEX, the external operations overseas operations, military operations, and of course, having said that, I think that the French 
there is a French consensus, especially uh, uh, regarding from the public profile, the French population needs to be well informed on a loyal basis with transparency about these in, invol the, its involvement, regardless of the dates regarding history. I can see my friend, Michel Roussin, who was the Minister of Cooperation. He did a very good job in this respect. And we were working with Edouard Balladur in 1994, in spring 1994. And as far as I remember, the President of the Republic, who is the Chief of Staff, requested our officers to organize, to implement the Turquoise military operation. And as, as you know, I know about the consequences, the human consequences. Of course, that was a big tragedy for the Rwandan population, and that was a, a big big, uh, harrowing uh, issue for them. But I would like to say that we French politicians, we believe this is our duty, I would say, to uh, support those who are doing the job. And, and since normally we were under the orders of the government of the French Republic, these people, these the, the, the officers need the support from the members of parliament and the ministers, especially regarding these specific responsibilities. It's the reason why the officers attended the military turquoise operation. The while I was a minister, of course, I, well, I called attention, I paid attention to what they said, but then, then I thought that it was my duty to be able to maintain this dialogue, even as a senator, regardless of uh, people's opinion, point of views, for example. That was very much important. Why? Because they were able to do their job at that time. They, that was a mandate, of course, uh, uh, given by the French government at that time, but of course they needed to be able to inform the population about this loyal, their loyal duties, their involvement, I would say. That was the uh, military involvement. You know, I have a good ex um, knowledge of French history. And I have a good command of uh, French history. Of course, uh, well, there are ups and downs among uh, 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 people, but I would say that it would be unfair to say that the military officers are the only officers who are responsible for what happened. Let me tell you a story. As a Minister of Defense of Armed Forces, under the orders of uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, I was supposed to uh, prepare the uh, Libyan operation, and of course, I did ask my colleague, my German uh, counterpart, to, to, and I asked him, what do you think of that? And he told me, I will agree with the Bundestag Commission in France for a long time, because even at the third, uh, during the Third Republic, the president was the chief of staff, okay? And regarding the Fifth Republic, he was the chief of diplomacy and the armed forces. And uh, the Minister of Defense of the Armed Forces is supposed to, to apply what's been said by the President of the Republic. But these men and women were involved. We cannot let them aside because they just, uh, they were just uh, applying the orders. They just did the job as we told them to do. So regardless of what you might say, regardless of uh, uh, even if I'm not an expert, I wanted to be the sponsor, to sponsor this dialogue in order to favor the Q&A sessions, questions, answers, etc. François Léotard, who was also a minister of the armed forces because of the tragedy, the Turquoise tragedy, I think that it was 2004, he asked for the disclassification of the secret operations, the documents. And this is, of course, so much important because that man was brave, he supported the parliament, and he made it possible for those who did the job on behalf of the republic to get 
uh, to benefit from the support of the government regarding transparency, etc., to maintain their dignity, the dignity of these officers, men and women, who uh, carried out the job. Otherwise, the Republic would not exist anymore. And I would say that this is so much important if you want to serve the Republic issues. Otherwise, that would be a great disaster for all of us, because otherwise that would lead to disorder. So this is what I wanted to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as an introduction. It is the reason why, regarding those who supported you, ladies and gentlemen, those who uh, are not uh, in full support, I believe that this exchange of information is absolutely necessary to maintain, maintain the robustness of our institutions. And I would like just to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, especially regarding the officers, the soldiers, etc., who are just uh, working um, overseas. Thank you for your attention.